Thanks for joining me today. I'm Sam Taylor, here to get you thinking about the Word of God. In early 2003, what appeared to be a strain of the influenza virus was spreading rapidly in China and Southeast Asia. When an American businessman fell ill in Vietnam, Italian microbiologist Dr. Carlo Rabani was called to the French hospital of Hanoi to examine him. As Dr. Rabani looked over the patient, he realized his sickness was not influenza, but rather a new, highly contagious disease. So what he did was he immediately alerted the World Health Organization, which resulted in the most effective response to an epidemic in history. Because this new disease that he discovered would soon be called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS. Dr. Urbani remained in Hanoi for a few weeks afterward treating new SARS patients until March 11, 2003, when he flew from Vietnam to Thailand for a conference that he was to be a speaker for. And on that flight, he began to feel feverish and realized that he, too, had contracted SARS. He was brought to a hospital in Bangkok where he was kept in isolation. He was only able to communicate with others via an intercom. His wife spoke with him just once during his illness. She was upset with him for him risking his life, treating sick patients when he had children at home. And he replied by asking her, If I can't work in such situations, what am I here for? Answering emails? Going to cocktail parties and pushing paper? Dr. Carlo Urbani died on March 29th, 2003. His last request was that his body be used for research to cure the disease. His keen observation skills and his coordination with the World Health Organization saved countless lives, possibly millions. And it's his remarkable mentality, even in the face of sickness and death, that I want to bring to your attention in our time together. In the Old Testament, the Levitical priests were called upon to examine the spiritual condition of Israelites that came to worship God. And they ensured that the proper sacrifice with the proper spirit was being offered, and the priests taught those presenting sacrifices and necessary principles to improve their spiritual health. They were, effectively, spiritual doctors. The disease was sin in all of its ugly forms, and the treatment was found by following the word of God. This relationship between the common Israelite and the priest was best explained in Malachi 2, verses 6 through 7. True instruction was in his mouth, and no wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness, and he turned many from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge, and people should seek instruction from his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Now, the law has been fulfilled, and the Levitical priesthood rendered obsolete through the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But, a new priesthood has taken its place, the order of Melchizedek, with the Lord Jesus Christ as the great high priest. And Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2, verses 4-5, through 5, that, As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. If the old priesthood, which can be likened to spiritual physicians, has been done away with, and we are called to be a royal priesthood through the Lord Jesus Christ, then it stands to follow that we are the next iteration of of spiritual physicians. And that's where the example of Dr. Carlo Urbani comes in. He was a world-renowned doctor, part of a Nobel Prize winning team. Yet he wasn't content with being an academic, but he was invested in helping people at great personal cost. And his last words to his wife, they ring so profound when examined through a spiritual lens. If I can't work in such situations, what am I here for? Answering emails, going to cocktail parties, and pushing paper? Do we think like this about our lives and the truth? Are we content to merely be spiritual academics where we socialize at gatherings and theorize the gospel? 
or will we take on that example of meeting our brothers and sisters face to face, closely listening to their problems and paying attention to the symptoms of deeper spiritual struggle? The ecclesia is not a sterile lab where we can passively examine sin. The ecclesia is a hospital full of broken people desperate for relief from this body of sin and death. Sometimes we get to be the physician, giving counsel from the word of God in the hopes that it'll treat. And sometimes we're the patient, not knowing where to turn, not knowing how to improve our condition, but desperate for relief all the same. In James 5, we're told, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. That's the kind of environment we need to experience. We can't afford to just merely observe ecclesial life from the comfort of our own homes. We have to be involved and invested in caring for others at personal cost to ourselves. So let's not fall into a pattern of being so far removed from the realities of discipleship. But rather, let's be engaging, let's be kind, let's be compassionate spiritual physicians to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And let us also bear in mind that while we are called to be spiritual physicians, we are also the patients. We're all infected with the same disease. And we're all waiting for the great physician our Lord Jesus Christ, to heal this world from sin and death forever. Let's reflect on the words of Malachi 4 verse 2 as we all await that true healing. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Thank you for spending this time with me today on Pause to Consider. If you like this devotion, Share it with your friends and with your Ecclesia. You can follow the Facebook and Instagram pages found in the podcast description for updates on new devotions and for availability on the major podcast platforms. If you have feedback, I want to hear about it. Email me at pause to consider podcast at gmail.com. I hope this has been helpful for you today. And I pray for God to be with you until we meet again whether it be in next week's devotion or in God's kingdom. God bless.